Uh, so yeah, so welcome to uh, my talk. This is my life in the chef community. Um, I'm kind of a last second addition to the, uh, the speaking lineup. There's some speakers that dropped out and Nathan uh, about four days ago said, uh, hey, Aaron, can you, uh, can you do your like, community talk at uh, ChefConf? I'm like, sure, and then here I am. So I've got a slide and all this crazy stuff. Uh, so I do want to thank uh, Chef for inviting me to speak at ChefConf again. I think this is my third time doing so. Um, it's a lot of fun and you're gonna learn about how I ended up joining the chef community at this point seven years ago. I actually like did a lot of mental, you know, looking back and everything and all the different memories I've got of not just this conference but also the different gatherings. This is, it feels like a family reunion every time I come to ChefConf and uh, get a little choked up and think about just all the, the wonderful people here. Um, so. Uh, I'm also a uh, core, core maintainer for the FreeBSD client team. Any FreeBSD folks in the audience? Yeah, I know there's like one or two. It's cool. I'm one of them. It's cool. Uh, there's another one who's giving a talk uh, later with Rab Kids. So uh, if you want to meet some of the FreeBSD maintainers um, and just want to know how FreeBSD works with Chef, uh, by all means, come ask us. Um, so I work for uh, DN Simple. We're a domain uh, management automation company. Um, what that really means is uh, we actually have a cookbook in the supermarket that is also part of the Chef Partner Cookbook Program. Uh, so if we want to automate the DNS records because everyone loves configuring bind, right? I mean, I do sometimes. Uh, I really like Power DNS more though, but I'm not going to start a, a turf war between those. But if you like to automate your DNS records, so if you spin up a new node or something like that in any of your cloud providers, you want to automatically connect, you know, A records, C name records, and everything as soon as that system is up and provisioned. That is all completely automated through our platform. We also have, through that cookbook now, um, SSL certificate provisioning. So if you uh, have us for your authoritative DNS, we will automate the entire Let's Encrypt authentication process and give you a cert, and then we'll auto-renew it every 60 days. So you never have to think about that again. So if you're really curious, uh, come find me. We also have uh, Andrew, who's our sales guy. He will definitely talk to you about that. Um, we're also hiring in the uh, the Europe and Asia regions for more operators. So if you are awesome with Chef or want to be more awesome with Chef, come talk to us, all right? So to give you a bit of an introduction in case you don't know me, some of, many of you out here do, because uh, you're here to kind of support me in, in, the, in doing this talk. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, my name is Aaron Kalin, and uh, my hair is generally red. So even in this picture, it's been red for long enough where it's on my passport now and my driver's license. Uh, so when I go through border control, especially in foreign countries, they see brown hair, sure. <laughs> Um, so I get a lot of hot takes and double takes because uh, they have to like figure out, you know, my hair color is not quite what it shows in the, uh, the badge and everything. Um, my preferred pronouns are he and him, if you're to address me later. Um, I'm also, I also do a lot of charity work, uh, dressed as a stormtrooper. That is definitely me. I've been doing that for a while now, too. I go to the, uh, the White Sox games and they do Star Wars nights. a lot of fun. I get to go see a baseball game for free um, and also just like get to hang out and be a nerd. Um, and yes, I do have more to just this foxtail. I don't think anyone spiked your drinks today. Um, I do have a tail that I wear. And I wear the chef coat to be a little ironic, um, but it's kind of stuck. It was like a sort of a little bit of a stunt a few years ago, and I just keep rolling with it. And uh, I think so far I've given out three recipes to the hotel staff uh, <laughs> because they all stop me and ask me, hey, are you a chef? And like, well, yeah. Uh, and then they'd be like, how do I cook a burger? And I was like, oh, well, how do you want to make the burger and all that stuff? And then, and, and now I'm just best buds with most of the doormen now at this point because they see me every time they, they see me walk in with the chef coat. And even the chefs inside of uh, all the kitchens and stuff, they come out and they, they see me in the coat and they're like, because they see all the different badges and things and all this stuff. You know, I wear my free BSD stuff with pride. Um, but yeah, so I'm sometimes this fuzzy fox. That was me at Chef Conf in 2016. Um, also me at ChefConf in 2016 when they had the photo booth. I was just rocking it with the photo booth guy because no one was over there. And I was like, hey, let's hang out. And I was in full fursuit and everything. Uh, if you were at the vendor mart last night, you probably saw a whole bunch of uh, fluffy things bouncing around. That was me and a whole bunch of uh, folks, including uh, some chef people. Hi. Um, but I'm going to also put a preface on this. This is a disclaimer. This is my personal story from about seven years ago when I first joined Chef. Um, and it is not reflective of the communities themselves because I am going to invoke one name um, that sometimes gets some vitriol. But honestly, the, the way the chef community rolls, um, it's not really an us versus them mentality. Um, so this is just my personal story and how it rocketed me into where I am today and why I'm speaking to all of you. Um, so about seven years ago, so we're going to take this badass time machine going back there. It's one of my favorite time machines. Um, but back about seven years ago, around July 2011, so we're really coming up on that seven-year mark, um, I've been working for a Ruby consulting company for about six months, um, and we started getting clients asking us about automating 
their systems because like we built apps for them, but they were like, all right, we also want to get them out to production on something cheaper than Heroku because that was the big uh, solution at the time. Uh, so I started researching it and I, I came across the other, at the time the big landscape was uh, SaltStack, uh, CF Engine, Puppet, and of course Chef. Um, and uh, I, you know, since Chef and Puppet were both written in Ruby, I was more interested in those because I was a Rubyist. Um, and you know, I figured I can understand the code. Um, so the first thing I wanted to do too is I figured, all right, Chicago's a pretty big city. There's probably a meetup for it. Um, and so after lo looking around at local meetups, I think at the time Chef was in town to sell Chef to Orbits because uh, they were located here in Chicago. And uh, both Puppet and Chef were in town. Um, but I just missed the Chef one uh, by I think like a day or two. Um, but the Puppet one was coming up. They were doing a meetup with uh, free training and also like a dev hack day thing at the same time. So I signed up for that. Um, and I, uh, I got into uh, the whole thing. And like I said, there's the two tracks. So we got to, there's like the hack on Puppet track. And then there was the, we'll give you basically the free first day training and all that stuff. So they gave you the training materials, all that stuff. So I popped in with my laptop, ready to learn. But then, not long after I sat down, um, I was wearing the t-shirt for the company I was working for at the time. I'm not going to invoke their name. Um, the lead teacher at the time um, was actually one of the, the main company founders. I'm not going to name them uh, on this thing, but uh, looked at me and saw the t-shirt and said, oh, he worked for that company. Not in a very like nice tone. It was kind of in this, is a tone that didn't make me feel comfortable because suddenly I feel like I was just walking into an argument and I didn't know the full context of what was going on. Um, so I started feeling a little uncomfortable with it and he's like, oh, you work for that company. Oh, does so-and-so still work there? And I was like, no, they don't. I'm just, I'm new here. Uh, so I was just here to learn about Puppet. Um, and after that quick interaction, I felt a little uncomfortable so I decided I was gonna quietly move over to the, the dev track. Um, so I went over there and uh, I started uh, looking around uh, what I could do, because initially they were saying, okay, well, we have a whole list of stuff. They had uh, RubyMine back then to track all of their bugs. So I went into there, and uh, uh, they had, you know, I looked at, looked at a bug, and I think it was, um, if I remember correctly, it was you could desert your entire Puppet cluster without any prompt, so you can just remove all of your client certifications and stuff in one go without a yes or no question in front of it. Because like, if you've ever done that knife and done like knife, no delete, It'll say like, are you sure? Are you really sure? You know, like you really have to put that capital Y in there for it to really do anything. So I figured, okay, this is a good opportunity to, to like help Puppet out. It's something I could try. I figured I was adept enough in Ruby to do this. Um, and back then the process was you went on RubyMine, you found the, the patch notes and, or the, the, uh, the issue, and then uh, you would create a patch in Git, and then you create a diff file, which then you had to join a mailing list, and then send that diff file there, then you would get a response back. So it's not like the pull request system that Chef has. Um, so it's like at least a three-step process just to get a patch into Puppet. There's no CI system. You're not really sure if your patch works. So you had to learn how to run all the testing suite. I think it took me the better part of the first section of the day to just get the test suite to run because uh, they didn't have it super well documented about how to do that. I had to get help for uh, from the maintainers to do so. Um, you know, so by comparison, Chef is a lot easier to contribute to, but I digress. Um, and near the end of the day, I actually figured out how to make the patch work. Um, but I had to do a little bit of magic because, you know, in order to verify, at least in Ruby, that you can prompt someone for something, you have to mess with standard in and standard out a little bit inside of Ruby. And the lead dev came over and looked at my code. And, you know, I got all my tests to pass because I figured out how to get the test suite running. Um, and they started nitpicking like you, like you do in a code review, which I was used to at that point because, you know, that the consultancy, we always did code reviews internally. Um, so I was used to that stuff. But then near the end of it, started seeing me do this standard in, standard out magic because there wasn't any good, clean way. I'd been looking around online and everyone said, here, you can do this one weird trick that will make everything work, right? That's how it all works in the internet. You find it on Stack Overflow, you just paste it in and hopefully it works. It doesn't break the world. And at least it seemed to work in my test. Um, the lead developer at the time, though, did not believe it could work. Even when I showed on my laptop, like works on my machine, literally, um, and I can just make the patch out of this and submit it to, to Puppet. Should be fine. Um, but still did not believe it, but walked me through the, the patch submission process and I sent it off. I still don't even know if it made it in to this day, um, but I think it was also the first time a prompt was ever put into Puppet, so they were extremely skeptical of the code, um, and especially the way it was tested. So as far as I know, that patch never made it in. 
Um, and from that whole experience, just that one day alone, I was pretty dejected. I, I didn't feel super welcome at all. Like, I got my patch in there, but I didn't feel like no one really seemed to appreciate my patch at all, or even just the fact I was there trying to participate in their community. Um, so I went home, you know, not feeling great, and I was like, all right, so I tried, I missed the chef thing, so I might as well go online and see how the chef thing works. Um, and I sat down on my workstation and I went on to the wiki, if any of uh, your older chefs remember that, which had a tutorial. And I went through the tutorial, and shocker, the tutorial had some problems in it. Um, so I, uh, I went around the wiki to figure out, okay, so I'm stuck. Where do I get help? Um, and they told me about an IRC channel on Freenode called Pound Chef. And I went in there, and I was a total newbie. I don't remember the exact question I asked. I can't go back that far in logs, but it's probably something like this. I'm a bit lost. Can someone help? And then I got a reply from Jay Timmerman, who's uh, now the new you know, awesome community chef, because he is. I know, I'm getting a little choked up here, because that was like a huge moment for me. I'm not uh, I know, I am. I am. I'm losing it up here. I figured this would happen at this talk, especially since you're here now. Um, but yeah, so Jay Timberman helped me out uh, so much that, you know, I finally got going with Chef. I started to understand it, because I finally got a successful chef run, which if any of you have done that, you know, like, once you see that, that finish, like, whoa, cool, I've got power with at least Chef anyway. Um, and that led to my first contribution uh, a few months later because uh, I started playing with other cookbooks. There's my apt one, and you can actually see uh, where he was helping me out by getting more of my, my patch ready to go and merge into core. Well, not core, actually. This was in the app cookbook, so it's separate from core. Um, so that code may or may not be in core now since app is, is folded into it. I hope my code isn't in there. <laughs> back then, I wasn't very confident about all that stuff. Um, but that was my very first like real contribution to Chef. It was actually like a one or two line change, really. And with some help from the Chef folks, I was able to get that merged in. And I felt super like helped and welcomed over that because uh, even when I was in the IRC chat, like you don't see the discussions in here because sometimes, at least late lately in a lot of the Chef stuff, you see like rows of emoji and maybe some gifts here and there. Uh, I didn't have that kind of fanfare, but there was actually a lot of love in the IRC channel saying thank you for your contribution. Um, and then not long after that, I got an email um, because back then you had to sign a contributor license agreement. Uh, I think bef I was just after they stopped doing faxes. Uh, that's how old, long ago that was. <laughs> I had to actually echo sign a document and send it back after I got my contribution. That's, that was the gate actually that stopped my initial contribution from getting in there. So that means they have my information. And then I got an email from Jesse Robbins, who at the time was the, uh, the community officer. But there would be someone new joining, um, who you all know now, Nathan Harvey. Um, but back then, this is Jesse Robbins, and he sent me this email saying, hey, thank you for contributing to Chef. And it was, it was really not Chef directly. I contributed to a cookbook. He said, we would like to invite you to the Community Summit. And at that time, it was the second ever Community Summit in Seattle. Um, and I, by this time now, I'd already left the previous uh, consulting company I was at, so I was working for a different company. And I told them I got this invitation. I was like, I got a free ticket, and like, and, but I just need airfare and a hotel. And they were like, we're not going to pay for that. So I based on just that love alone, I was like, all right, I'm going to go check this thing out. Because if these people are being this welcome and nice to me, I'm going to go see what this is all about. Um, so I paid my own way to go out there. Couldn't afford the main hotel, so I went to a place like nearby that was super cheap. Uh, and I paid for like the cheapest airfare I could possibly get at a unspeakable hour in the morning, because I hate flying that early. But I'm glad I did. Because once I got there, <laughs> uh, I showed them, you know, because I was working for a different company at the time, the Use Chef. Um, and I was starting to like work on my, my chef thing. I had my chef repo. I was very proud of it. I didn't think it was great, but I was like, all right, I can do this. Um, but there's a, a guy I met there named Fletcher Nickel, uh, who was talking about this new tool he built called Jamie CI. Um, yeah. <laughs> I know, I'm name dropping like left and right here. He built this new tool called Jamie CI because back then, Chef had already built something called Test Kitchen, but it was very focused and it did not do what Jamie CI did because Jamie CI's big claim to fame was that it actually did the whole automation of building up a thing in Vagrant, you know, setting it up, running your chef inside of it, and then it came back. And at that point, that, I think that was where the decision to merge happened. Um, and then also, there was uh, another guy there, Jamie Windsor, who was announcing his brand new tool called Berkshelf that was finally being open sourced. Um, and that's when uh, I got to a talk about Berkshelf and everything, and then I think at some point I sheepishly asked Adam Jacob, I was like, hey, uh, how does this Berkshelf thing work? Here's my chef repo. And then he called over Jamie, who they both sat down with me and basically paired with me to tell me, you're definitely doing it wrong. Let's show you a better way. Um, and that was a huge, huge, huge moment for me. 
Um, and at this point now, I've gone, gone to, I'm only, I'm the, as far as I know, it's still the only non-chef employee that's gone to every single summit, except for the first one, and the New York summit, um, because I'm that addicted to them, because I see basically all of my friends that I've known from IRC, um, and I learn something new every time I go out there. Um, and, it's, and after uh, Anthony, the founder of the company, went to the New York summit, uh, he was thoroughly convinced, uh, and even actually went to ChefConf, because we sponsored uh, last year, uh, he went to that and he's, he was thoroughly convinced that the Simple needs to be in the chef community uh, going forward. So all I have to do is tell him, hey, London Summit's coming up, I need a flight. He said, expense it, it's fine, I'll take care of it. And it was also at that first Seattle Summit that I made another core patch to chef. That was my first core patch into chef. I had to go digging around. And then uh, the following summit, uh, I sheepishly asked the question, what about FreeBSD? Because this is the formation of the CBGB. If you don't know that, you should go check it out. <laughs> uh, or even just ask in the community chat uh, about what all that, what all that entails. Um, but they were forming the maintainers list. And uh, I saw all the different uh, platforms, and I didn't see FreeBSD. And I, I said yes to doing FreeBSD. And from that point on, Adam always identified me as, hey, FreeBSD guy. <laughs> Um, and since then, I, I, we've added, what, two or three more maintainers uh, that are in that list. And, you know, there's not a whole lot of movement in the FreeBSD community. So there hasn't been a lot I've had to do. And in fact, a lot of the other chef employees generally have my back with that. So there's some weird bug. They usually hit it before I do. Um, but uh, I've also, since then, I've contributed to many, many chef cookbooks that are now in core. Uh, I've also contributed to Habitat. I think I've touched virtually every project at Chef at this point. Um, and I've also contributed probably one of the more infamous uh, RFCs, and I only say that because it, it was an interesting discussion point for the community as a whole. Um, so at the London Summit, um, we were kind of joking about how Europeans are, uh, you know, very, very reserved, very polite. Um, and then, you know, we come in rolling in as chefs, and especially Rubius, and we're like, yeah, let's hug. You know, we're all about hugs and showing affection for each other. And JJ and I were kind of joking about how, like, yeah, you know, there's a whole process around this and stuff. It's like, hmm could we write an RFC? And we basically started writing it like that afternoon in between sessions. And uh, we were both absolutely sure it would just get kicked out of the park. Like no one would really take it seriously. Um, but if you go look at this up, you don't have to do it right now, but look up uh, number 164 in the Chef RFC thing. And it's actually a really civil, awesome discussion to the point where the Seattle government uses it as a, uh, an example of how to engage the community. Um, so it's actually really good, because there's a lot of stuff we didn't think of. Like, so to, to go over the actual RFC, like if you are wanting to accept a hug, you go like this. Yes, see? Like that. But if you're feeling a little sick and everything, and, and I, I want to go for the hug, it, maybe, maybe you are wanting to hug, but you're feeling a little sick, you'd be like, all right, we can do the elbow bump, or you can do a fist bump, that also works too. But if you really don't want to accept hugs, that's another way to, to show that to someone else. Because I may be like, hey, I want to give you a hug. And you're like, I'm not feeling it today. That's a quick example and demo of the RFC for hugs. It actually fully details about the entire protocol that goes in. And actually, other communities have now copied this, which is pretty cool. But I think like, the fact that this even happened in Chef is a beautiful example of how awesome the community is here. So you might be thinking at this point, OK, I'm thoroughly convinced. Chef is pretty awesome. How do I join? So there's a few different ways. There's actually a lot. I ended up having to break this down into two different slides. But the big one, if you haven't done it already, join the community Slack. Um, and then, oddly enough, and I won't even go into the specifics about it, but there's actually more than one community Slack. There's, if you're a Habitat person, also join the other, other uh, Slack. Yeah, I know. Of course, we all need more Slacks to join, right? Uh, so both of those, definitely join them, especially if you're really interested in the Habitat community. Um, they're also really amazing people. I did like a one-line doc change, and I got like 30 emoji gifts <laughs> and rainbows and stuff. And I was like freaking out over like, OK, so who's going to finally hit the merge button after the other emojis make it in? But then a bot merged it for me, so it didn't matter. Um, the weekly developer meetings are really awesome. Those are uh, in the Chef community Slack under developer meetings. Those happen every Thursday. Um, I don't remember the time exactly, because at least for here, it's 11 AM, but it's weirder over on the other side of the pond. Um, those are where we discuss things like the RFC process. Um, so if there are any pending RFCs, that's where the discussions for them happen. And then there's a voting process that occurs as well after the initial discussions have been made, and we formulate the actual RFC. But that's how things change in the Chef product and community as a whole, so things like 
the hug RFC is actually part of that code of conduct and all that stuff too. It's really neat, like you can directly affect processes at Chef. Um, you're already at ChefConf, so you don't need to worry about checking this one off. So welcome to Chef. Um, and also the community summits, like I was talking about before, I'm, I'm thoroughly addicted to them. They're amazing. Uh, they're wonderful. They, you get to really connect with all the people who do a lot of contributions in the community. And local meetups too. If you're in a larger city, there's probably a meetup, maybe not for Chef directly, but it might be about like a DevOps meetup or something like that. And you can talk to other practitioners who are also really amazing, but really look for the Chef ones because Chef folk are really crazy and awesome. But just remember, my first contribution was a one line change. So you don't, even if it's a doc patch, you can still contribute. So don't think that it's, it's too scary or too hard. Like you don't need to know all the crazy problems. There's actually a whole thing inside of uh, uh, the chef repo of like first timer uh, commits that you can do. And even if it's just basic doc stuff that people know may not be documented correctly or just something that might be a really simple, easy to access problem, they're all labeled. Um, and, and again, you can always just ask in the community, like I wanna help patch chef. And you will definitely get someone from Chef saying, hey, we'll show you how you can help. Um, and hugs are definitely a thing here. They're also optional, so you know the protocol now. Um, but we also love hugging. It's one of the things we do. Um, but I also want to remind that all of you are awesome. Uh, and many of you in the audience who know me for many years, um, this is, you are all why I stay here. Uh, because you all accept me for how crazy and weird and everything that I am. Like here's some nice memories I've had for many, many years of Chef Comps and summits and all that stuff and all my various forms that I show up in. Because you know, as a, as a weird queer boy in tech that's also a furry, uh, I feel actually super welcome and happy here. And I'm not sure I could feel that in any other community. Um, and I want all of you to take that away as like, this is a place that you can belong, even if you think you don't belong anywhere else. And I really, really want to thank all the folks who basically got me here today and why I'm getting super choked up now because I'm seeing them in the audience. I'm, I'm trying to avoid looking at them because every time I do, I'm like, oh my God, I love this. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, but I really want to thank all of you for, for listening to me. I know I just went over a little bit on time, but uh, hopefully you all got at least a little bit of information, a lot of encouragement about joining the Chef community because it's a lot of awesome, beautiful people. Thank you. <laughs>